thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Graham and Larissa and team and everybody at Look, Let's Cook Raw and all of you for joining in today. I am so excited. Happy New Year. Um, and yeah, so today we're going to be making two different things. This is going to be a stuffed apricot mushroom and a kale pomegranate salad. So I'm gonna start with the mushrooms because I want to have them in the dehydrator. Now you don't need to use a dehydrator for this recipe. It's just kind of an extra bonus if you want to use the dehydrator, but I will be using the dehydrator. So first up, first up, first up, um, for this, for these two recipes, some of the tools that I'll be using, I'm gonna be using a grapefruit spoon. Now, I know, I know not everybody has one of these, but I love them for, for scooping out the inside of the mushrooms. So if you have a grapefruit spoon, you can use that. If you don't have a grapefruit spoon, you can use a melon baller or maybe an ice cream scoop if it's small enough. So that's another option too. Or you can always safely use a knife, always be safe with it. We're gonna be using a Vitamix or high-speed blender and a food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you can always use the blender as well. It still works, it's just not as chunky, it's a little bit smoother. And I'm also going to be using a bowl and a strainer to deal with the pomegranate. Now the cool thing about this one was that I'm gonna be opening this pomegranate. I, I said to use two pomegranates, but because these ones are so big, I'm just only gonna use one. So it depends on the size of your pomegranates, but I will be using just one pomegranate for this uh, show specifically. Normally they've been pr pretty small. So I was thinking two would be perfect, but <laughs> these ones are really big right now. So, and then otherwise you'll need like um, a, a citrus reamer, a knife and a good cutting board and your dehydrator if you're gonna use the dehydrator. So first up, I'm going to juice one of my lemons into a bowl. This is what I'm going to use to marin uh, to just kind of not really marinate, but soak the mushrooms in it because I find that when they're in the dehydrator, they can get a little bit too dry. So I like to let them sit in a little bit of lemon juice. You could always add spices to this if you want. You could add a little garlic powder or fresh grated ginger or whatever you want to add to the lemon juice, but we're just gonna be using the lemon juice for today. So we've got the lemon juice done. Then I will take our mushrooms, grab all your mushrooms, and we're not going to be um, throwing away the insides. We're gonna use the insides for the insides. So with the grapefruit spoon, what I like to do is I just like to um, go in on the side and just kind of gently <laughs> cut out the inside of the mushroom, just like so, so that there's a lot of space. We want, we want to stuff these really well. And then I'll scrape the inside of the mushroom and I'll get as much out as I can without poking a hole in the bottom. So that's how I do that. And then after I do that, then I stick it in the lemon juice and just kind of let it sit in the lemon juice while I work on the next mushroom. And we're gonna do all of the mushrooms like this. going to scoop these out. And I personally prefer the brown criminy mushrooms, but the store didn't have any bigger ones for stuffed mushrooms. They only had the little itty bitty tiny ones. So I had to go with the white, unfortunately, but they're still good. We get that in there. And sometimes if you're using a melon baller, that might work better than a spoon or whatever you have, any tools that you have available to you that you can use to scoop out the inside of your mushrooms will work just fine.
There we go. We have another one. I'm actually only going to do the four right now, just to save time. So we've got these mushrooms here like this. Once they're finished, you can leave them in the lemon juice. If you have enough space for them, you could have multiple bowls or a larger bowl with the lemon juice inside. What we want to do next, actually, I do need to do the rest of them because I need more mushrooms. So <laughs> let's try to get these all, all scooped out in a timely fashion. <laughs> so Lisa, would you eat them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? What's your timing on those? <laughs> Um, I, these are one of my favorite things to make for, um, it's kind of like a side best for dinner time, I would say. Um, and also best for winter kind of like holiday gatherings. I feel like they're a really good appetizer or something that you can share with friends. You can take them, um, to parties and stuff. I mean, when we're able to have parties, but um, they're actually in my winter recipe book. So I just adapted the recipe slightly. And this one here is one of my favorites for holidays. So for like the traditional meal or whatever you decide. So Lisa, will we be using the stems in this recipe? Yes, yes, we're going to be using these stems to bulk up the inside because we need enough to fill them again. So yeah, don't throw those away. We're gonna need them. You can add them to your blender or your um, food processor if you want. You can get those in there started. There we go, one more. And this works best with 12. I unfortunately, like I said, the, the store was very low on options. So I was only able to get nine for the show because I, I actually made some already that's waiting in the dehydrator to show you after. So there we go. We've got all of our mushrooms and they're just gonna sit in this lemon juice just for a little bit while they soften in there and we're going to make this the insides so we'll just set that aside and next up we've got our food processor and we're going to start with all of the stems from our mushrooms all right we are also going to add some yellow onion so if you have a little yellow onion we can chop that up into a couple chunks and you can start slow with the onion. You can always add more if you want. So if you want, if, if onions are a little intense for you, you could start with half of an onion. If you really like onion, then you could do a whole onion. Um, but I'm going to do this entire one because I like oniony. So I'm gonna put the whole onion in there. Then, then, then we've got our dried apricots. So the dried apricots, these ones that I get are organic and unsulfured. So these ones you could always also dry your own if you have the, uh, if you can get fresh apric apricots and dry them yourself. So we're gonna put a cup of apricots in there. And then I have four tablespoons or a quarter cup of sunflower seeds that have been soaking in a little bit of water. If they haven't been soaking, that's okay. I'll just use the soaked sunflower and add a little bit of water here just to get the rest of them out. <laughs> there we go. And then for flavor, again, you can start slow with whatever spices that you add to this and you can add any other spices that you want. I'm going to use two cloves of garlic. You can use one clove if you want to start. We've got half a teaspoon of onion powder. We have half a teaspoon of sage and we have a quarter teaspoon of thyme. So we'll do those three. 
And that's that. So the next step is to blend. So let's get this blended here. I like to scrape down the sides. I have this awesome spatula. It's a really thin one. It's by OXO. This is probably our favorite spatula of all time. <laughs> we want to get a whole bunch more of them because we find we're always using them. It's so good and it fits in the Vitamix really well. So what I like to do is just pull down some of the stuff that has been on the side, mix it up a little bit, and then we will blend it a little bit longer. Awesome. Now, again, if you do not have a food processor, that's okay. You can use the Vitamix or any blender that you have. Totally fine. So now that that's ready, we're going to stuff our mushrooms. We've got our mushrooms. And because we're going to be putting our mushrooms in the dehydrator, I have a dehydrator tray right here, ready to go. I'm going to use this miniature ice cream scoop to get them in here, but you can always use a spoon. That's totally cool. And we're just going to stuff our mushrooms with our apricot sunflower deliciousness. Listen, you had apricots in there, right? Yes, dried apricots. You could use dates or figs if you want, if you aren't able to get apricots, but... If you're using fresh sage, how much should you substitute for the powdered sage? Um, if you're using fresh, I would use a little bit more, maybe, um, I would say maybe half a teaspoon or sorry, half one teaspoon worth of fresh sage, but you can always add more. Once you've blended this, you can give it a taste. And if you want to add more, you can always add more and then blend it because it can really be based on like personal tastes. A lot of people will try a recipe and they'll say, oh, it's too sagey or I need more sage. So definitely give it a taste and see how you like it. And if you want to add more sage, definitely add more. And fresh sage is always best, of course. Lisa, do you soak the uh, apricots? You can, but I did not soak them for this one because um, I like it a little bit chunky instead of as smooth. So, but you can definitely, definitely um, soak them beforehand if you want. It, Elisa, it also, what? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, you go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say um, when you soak your apricots and your sunflower seeds and all of that, keep in mind that it's going to create a more watery um, mix to put in your mushrooms because you're adding all that extra water. So using dried is really good if you, if you don't have a lot of time to let them sit in the dehydrator because if they're really, really watery, then you might need to leave them in the dehydrator a little longer. And it really just depends on the time that you have to be able to make this. And you, uh, there was another question. So what's the story behind this recipe? Did you come up, what, how did you create this? I'm just curious. Um, well, I was looking around at um, various ideas because I was building my winter raw vegan recipe book. And I was like, what could I do that's kind of festive, that's different, different flavors. And I was thinking of doing like different styles of stuffed mushrooms and I found one that was date based and I thought I want to make one that's more um, like a more, it's still really sweet because of the apricots, but I like that it's more savory with the spices, with the sage and the thyme and the onion. And then I, I was like, well, let's just do apricots because not a lot of recipes have apricots involved. And I thought that would be a really fun, tasty, different way to make stuffed mushrooms. So that's kind of how that one happened all on its own. So there we go. 
We've got our mushrooms stuffed. So the next step would be to put this into the dehydrator. So I would put this in the dehydrator for probably an hour or two at 110. That's what I like. And then it's just going to bring the, the insides kind of a little bit more solid, more flavors going to appear. And yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put these into the dehydrator just like, whoop. Just like so. And then we go. Dr. Yeah, I, wanna, uh, I have a, a, a question for Dr. Graham. Dr. Yes. Graham, can you um, kind of explain um, how to choose the um, dry fruit? I think it's important so they um, add all kind of um, ingredients to dry food, if, if you can um, educate us. Sure. Well, I think, I think Lisa explained it beautifully. And Lisa, I agree with you. I have about four or maybe six of those oxo spatulas. Um, <clears throat> but I also actually like the Vitamix spatula, which is my favorite. So I've got more than that. Of those. Vitamix spatula is just the best. But, I'm going to um, need to get one of those. <laughs> well, it's harder plastic because I find with the oxo, every time I touch a blade, it... Mm. Do you, you go through those oxo spatulas really quickly because they're soft, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. With pieces of oxo spatula in your dinner. Um, <laughs> so, but Lisa explained it perfectly. Uh, Larissa, she explained it perfectly that we're looking for preferably organic. We're looking for um, fruit that has not been treated in any of the ways that are typically done to preserve shelf life, the most common way being the use of sulfur. Uh, and that not only preserves shelf life, but it also, it, it's used to prevent oxidation that causes color change in the fruit. So if you saw, although apricots are typically orange or yellow, or maybe even a touch of green on them, um, the fruit that Lisa was using was very dark in color. And it darkened because it had oxidized a little bit, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, our food oxidizes while we chew it and whatnot. So, uh, and that's really our primary concern is that you want to choose unsulfured fruit. And, and they'll always tell you if it's been sulfured and they'll pretty much always tell you if it hasn't, <laughs> you know, so it's an easy thing to see. And pa past that, you just want to go to a credible supplier, whoever's getting you your fruit. There's enough yeah, competition. Awesome. There's enough competition, so you pretty much get what you pay for. If you buy high quality figs, they're going to be better than low quality dried figs, you know. And and if you buy high quality dates, you're going to pay a little more, but you're going to get better dates. The work, the world's already sorted all that out for us. And the same with dried apricots or any of the other things. Um, you know, you, you can find some remarkable deals, but it's usually a lower quality fruit. So agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Explained it. No, yeah, no, thank you. You don't want that sulfur. Uh, free sulfur is really hard on our system. It it does a lot of things that are harmful to us. The most probably the most nasty one is is it affects a structure in your brain called the corpus callosum, which allows the left side of your brain to coordinate with the right side of your brain, uh, which makes for some very poor decision-making and, and you can't make associations in the same way. You won't be able to do a lot of hypothetical or math or, or positioning of things. Left and right brain functions, although they seem like you're either left-sided or right-sided, not really. They're actually talking to each other all the time and free sulfur interferes with that. So we're not looking to have sulfur free. Yay, yes, sulfur free all the way. Yeah, totally. When I was looking for the apricots at the store last night, they had lots of different kinds and most of them had were like the bright neon orange and you're like, they shouldn't look like that. <laughs> so I went to look for the organic um, unsulfured version and they were more expensive, but I treat my body with as much respect as I can. So that's why I chose those ones. Thank you, Dr. Graham, for sharing that. That's awesome. 
Sure, my pleasure. So, next up, we've got the pomegranate and we're gonna be making the dressing for our pomegranate salad. And so there's a lot of different ways. I've seen a lot of different ways of opening these, but I'm gonna share my favorite way. And the cool thing is I'm wearing my white chef jacket because it's a little challenge to me to not get pomegranate juice on my chef jacket. So let's see if we can do it. What we're going to use is a giant bowl of water. So if you can get a giant bowl and fill it with water enough for you to submerge your hands into, that would be awesome. Then what you wanna do is you wanna chop off the top of your pomegranate. And I'm gonna do that just over here, over the sink. Cause I know that's going to be a little bit extra juice, but here we go. I'm just gonna top, chop off the top of the pomegranate. This one is a little different. All right, so once you chop off the top, then you want to chop down the sides where it has, where the flesh meets the ring around the skin. So right here, I would give it a little bit of a cut down the side. Right here, I would give it a little cut down the side. Here and here looks like one. And you want to do this anywhere where you see kind of like the, uh, the white part heading to the edge. So there'll be quite a few on here. Just cut those down the sides. And then the best part, then we put our pomegranate in the water where you can safely open all of your, of, of your sections without having it spray all over your face. So here we go. And it's really easy to just kind of play with the pomegranate and, and just get those seeds off without having all of that extra juice spraying everywhere. So this is my personal favorite way to get the seeds out of a pomegranate. I feel it's the easiest for me, but again, everybody has like different ways of doing it. Um, this one I found to be the best. I hope you guys are having fun. It's kind of cool to have to play with the seeds in the water like this. And you'll notice another really cool thing about this technique is that all of the little, the, the pith that floats, it just floats to the top. So you can just skim it off and then you can use a strainer to get all of the seeds out of the water when you're done. It's very creative, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Because I found when I when I was originally, you know, whenever I'd get a pomegranate, I would always end up rinsing my hands over and over and over and over again. It was just like, oh, it's so much work to take all the seeds out of a pomegranate. So I never really ate them very often. And then one day I was like, okay, I'm like what if I just... Um, did them under a running faucet, but that's a waste of water. So I was like, okay, I don't want to do it that way. Um, but it was helping because I could just have the pomegranate under the running water and I could de-seed it really easily. But then I was like, what if I just had a bowl of water and it works just, just so it's awesome. I'm sure other people have figured this out too. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that's probably doing this, but see, it's so easy to get all the seeds out of the pomegranate. So keep de-seeding. Just playing around with the seeds. And this is a great moment to get in connection with your food and just really kind of like meditate and enjoy the process because a lot of us are disconnected with our food and how it's prepared. We've been eating fast food for the majority of our life for many of us and it's not as connecting as if you do it yourself so taking that time to just say play with your food <laughs> it's awesome it's fun it's rewarding and you're getting it as fresh as possible All right.
right. Getting close here. We will probably need about one cup worth of the seeds. So if you have about a cup in there, we should be good to go just to save a little extra time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pomegranate out of the water and skim all of that pith off the top and some of the stuff from the bottom. And you could actually use the strainer for the pith part if you want, but I don't mind if there's a couple pieces of pith in my dressing, not a big deal. All right, so there we have our pomegranate seeds in the water. Yes, it's a little pink because some of them burst, which is totally fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain the water out with my strainer over the sink to get all of the seeds. And voila, we've got our pomegranate seeds without getting messy. Yay. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that little technique. So we're going to move on to the dressing. Actually, let's do the salad first. Let's create the salad first. So I have here um, purple kale. You can use any kale that you like or any lettuce that you like. It doesn't have to be kale. I like kale just because I like the purple kale. Um, it's very seasonal. And if you're doing this for like a holiday recipe or whatever, um, the purple kale is really nice. I like to destem them and then massage slightly. You can kind of rub it in your hands, get it a little softer if you want, just to break it up so it's not as rough because I don't like using salt or oil to do so. So you just gotta, just gotta rub it together. <laughs> and then once that's like that, then you can just put it into your bowl and keep going with your kale. And make sure you wash your kale really well as well because I've noticed that um, it can be quite gritty if you don't wash it really well. And sometimes rolling it on the counter is good. Just get it. Nice and soft. And there we go. Do you prefer any color of kale against others? What's what's your preference, Lisa? Um, I I like the purple kale mostly for the color of it, for the presentation purposes. But my favorite kale is the black Lacianto kale or the dinosaur kale. Um, that's my absolute favorite one. I feel because it's softer and I just prefer how that one tastes. But again, everybody has their preferences and I like this one because it's so pretty. It looks so gorgeous in salads with that purple stem. So that's why I chose the purple for this recipe because again, it's very holiday-like, um, but yeah. Uh, the black kale is my favorite. Do you have a favorite kale? Well, I, I, I'd have to say, um, depends on the purpose, depends on the use. Mm, uh, yes. Different kales for different reasons, right? But I don't know how it is in your part of the world. The other reason I wash my kale is because it's really prone to white fly. Mm at least where we are, we, a couple of times a year. I mean, not, not now because white flies not in season either, but, but um, you know, at those times a year when white fly is having the time of its life, <laughs> they're doing so on kale. Yes, excellent point. Yeah, I've, I've not heard of that. It might be in your area, but that's a really, really good point because there are I mean, kale is one of those ones that are like, you can find a lot of life in, in kale just because <laughs> the leaves are so curly and they just live in it. <laughs> so yeah, giving it that, that massage. Um, this is how I do it. Um, 
Dr. Graham, do you have any other tips for massaging kale? Because I know most of the stuff when you research online on how to have a, like a really soft kale salad, it's always salt or oil, which we don't use. So I find that this works really well. I don't know if you have another tip that works really good. Well, in fact, salt works really well, but mm. um, you have to then wash it all off, which is a, yeah. Yeah, like, it's a pain. Um, yeah. Uh, using your hands is by far and away the best way to go because you can, you're literally softening the kale. I mean, you're, you're getting it to where you want it. You just, you got to keep breaking every time you break up one of the cell walls and the, you know, there's millions of cell walls in that little handful of kale, but every time you break up even one cell wall, the, the kale gets a little bit softer and easier to consume. But there are other ways. You could wilt it for three or four minutes in a dehydrator, and that would help it lose some of its hydrostatic pressure and make it softer, but it would still be tough to chew. The the using your hands works really well. If you if you were to do that with something acidic, and I don't know if there's anything acidic besides pomegranate going in your recipe, um, but if you use something acidic, like I'll very often use a bit of lemon and then marinate it and let it sit in some lemon. And that will also work almost as, almost like salt does really. You just, you let it marinate a bit, whether it's lemon or tomato, or depends what, what you're making. Uh, if I'm gonna make a kale dish with tomato, I'll let the kale and tomato sit with each other for a good while before I then get on and make the recipe. Very nice. Those are great ideas stuff that I have not thought of, <laughs> uh, which is really awesome. Yeah, tomato and kale, having them sit together. I also like when I make a kale recipe, I like to make it in advance as well and have it sit, like you said, sit in the dressing. We're going to be using lemon, so could have added the lemon to that um, and then let it kind of sit together. But you could always make the salad and then while you're uh, mushrooms are dehydrating. You could just let the salad sit with the dressing and kind of get a little softer, but that's a good way too. And the salad looks so good. <laughs> this, and it almost like brings out some of the, the green when you massage it, it like makes it like a darker, darker, darker kale green. So pretty. Oh, another thing that I do uh, depends again on texture that you're trying to get. But another thing that I'll do is I will take my kale. Uh, I'll do this with, I'll even do this with lettuce, but I'll certainly do it with kale and run it through the food processor and let the, let the sabatier the blade of the food processor just break it up a bit. And that, you know, make, makes it far, far, eat. I mean, kale can be tough to chew, you know, mm -hmm. so let that sabatier blade break it all up first and then you've got a texture and size, it, it works. So there's a lot of ways to achieve it as there is with everything every week. How many, like said, how many ways could you open up a, open up a pomegranate? But I love, I love how clean you keep your kitchen and how streamlined your processes are. So you really do a great job. Oh, thank you, thank you. That means a lot coming from you, thank you. <laughs> Lisa, awesome. I okay. massage my kale with um, celery juice, and Ooh. I really like how it's coming up. I think the salts and celery juice really make it very specially soft. That's a good idea, too. Oh, I love all the ideas. This is great. So we've got our kale done. Our kale is ready to go. So again, you can add whatever you want to the salad, but this specific salad, we're just going to be adding some red onion and some pomegranate seeds. So you can add as much or as little red onion as you want. I'm just gonna chop about three rings off of this one. Here we go. One, two, and three. Every time I add pomegranate seeds to a salad my daughter jumps up and down and says yippee oh that's awesome <laughs> so, I mean, especially this time of year we've been going through a lot of pomegranate 
Yeah, pomegranate is so good. And it I love adding fruit to salads because it gives it that sweetness, that sweet edge. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So we've got our red onion or purple onion. I mean, people call it different things, but <laughs> here we go. And then I think I'm gonna do one more for the top for after when I add the dressing. So I'm just going to slice up one more and I'm gonna do it in quarters, this one. Well, not quarters, maybe just like slice it however you want. And I'm gonna save those for the topping. Then we're going to make the dressing. The dressing is very, very, very simple. We're gonna start with the juice of a lemon. So if I can find my creamer here. Okay. The juice of a lemon. Juice that into your blender. Just like so. There we go. Then we are going to add four medjool dates. So you want to make sure that you pit those. Make sure the pits are not in your blender. <laughs> I've done that a couple times and it's not fun. So make sure the pit is outside of the blender. How many times? <laughs> I, I've done it a few times. <laughs> just sometimes you're like, you're doing a hundred things and you're just like, okay, what, what, what? So you're left to slow down and make sure <laughs> the seeds in there. I'm also going to be using half a teaspoon of mustard powder and half, I would say half a cup, or you can always add more, just kind of however much you want, because you can taste it after. If you want to add more pomegranate, you can, but I'm adding a, just over half a cup of pomegranate seeds, and I'm going to save the rest of them for the top of the salad. So there we go. That's the Simplicity of our dressing. I've got some water here. I will add a little bit of water, probably about a cup worth of water. And you can always add more if you want a thinner dressing, add more if you want a thicker dresser, don't add as much. And there we go. We've got our dressing ready to go. And it's beautiful pink color. So you can pour that over top of your salad, just like so. And top it off with a little bit more red onion if you want. And your pomegranate seeds. ones I made this morning for you guys and I had it oh are you guys you guys can see me we're okay we can see you now you froze for a moment but we have a, a question too about what went in the blender just now oh yeah yeah for sure so in the blender was the juice of one lemon four pitted medjool dates half a teaspoon of mustard powder and just over half a cup of pomegranate seeds with a little bit of water, about a cup of water. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And so these mushrooms I made this morning, so they have spent some time in the dehydrator just to show what they look like when they're finished. Would you have been just as happy if somebody used orange juice, grapefruit juice, pineapple, mango, or anything else along those uh, lines instead of water? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it's great. Like you said, it's great to experiment with different flavors. Anything acidic is gonna work pretty well with right. it. Um, I, I think it, those sound wonderful and I wanna try them. 
<laughs> but here we go, you guys, we made it. We've got our stuffed mushrooms and our pomegranate kale salad all finished and ready to go. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lisa, that was so awesome. Thank Fast, you. Beautiful, exciting, creative, beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. Really Thank appreciate you. contributing to Let's Go Crawl. And uh, guys, I want to tell you that Lisa committed to be on uh, February 14th. She will do Valentine's show with her husband, Nate. So make sure you register. We'll put that show shortly. Yes, that's going to be so much fun. Nate's really excited to do the recipe with me on the show. So that's going to be a fun one. Make sure you come to that one. It's on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate your happy smile, beautiful, beautiful re recipes, beautiful presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I will make sure to get some pictures for you. Yes. And every, I hope everybody else is able to get some really good pictures before you dig in. Yes. Pictures are important. We'll uh, insert them in our replay videos. So every time you watch it again, you'll see your past, past creations. So make sure you send it to us. And